2010, in July, it was plugged. The leak started in April, so you can imagine that was May, April, May, June. The oil was leaking. It was a very big leak. Okay, so uh, we are. This is based on uh, this document here, an ethical approach to crisis management. So, the first uh, way they're going to judge the approach to the crisis is trustworthiness. So what does trustworthiness mean? What, what does it mean to be trustworthy? Are you trustworthy? Are you trustworthy? Can I trust you? Can you trust BP? So these are the words that we associated with. Honest, are you honest? Do you keep promises? If you make a promise, do you keep the promise? Are you loyal? Are you transparent? Transparent means you let everybody see. You're not hiding anything. Okay? In that case, you're trustworthy. So in BP, they had some problem with their trustworthiness, okay? They talked to the employees of BP. So this company, at the end of the BP crisis, they went to BP and they tried to find out what was the problem. So they interviewed some of the employees. And the employees said that we couldn't communicate well uh, with the managers, okay? And especially, we couldn't tell them if there was any risk on the project. They said that sometimes people got fired if they were complaining too much about the risk on the project. Okay? So is that kind of transparent? Transparent company? Somebody is complaining, oh, this project is too risky. So they did some study and they found out that something like 48% of the workers felt that if they reported the risk, they could have some negative consequence on their career, right? So that's one reason why the workers didn't want to report about the bad risk piece situation, okay? So all of this is undermining the trust in BP. It's undermining me, it's harder to trust them. So to solve this problem, BP set up uh, Open Talk. It's a confidential helpline for people to speak up when the code of conduct is being violated. So we talked earlier about a code of conduct, the way people should behave, okay, uh, in the company. So some people in the company were not behaving the way they should behave. So it's one thing to have a vision, right? We have a vision of our values and what ethical situation we want. But we also need to make code of conduct so it's clearly put into practice, right? But then there's another problem. Even though we have a code of conduct, the CEO and the manager think, oh, everything is okay, we made a code of conduct, right? Maybe it's not okay because maybe people are not following the code of conduct and I don't know about that at the top level. It's hidden from me. So how can we solve this problem? Okay, make a confidential helpline. Do you understand confidential? Yes. 
or anonymous. So we don't, it doesn't matter who you are. Just call up, tell them, oh, there's this, I think there's this big risk on this project. Okay, so I think you need to check about that. Or I think the manager is not listening about the risks. So please check about that. So the next case is uh, responsibility. Are you responsible? Yes. If you're responsible, you're not going to shift blame for your mistakes. Okay, you made a mistake, you're not going to say, oh, it wasn't my fault, it was his fault, right? People are always looking for ways to blame other people, right? I find myself sometimes, I also find, trying to find some way to blame my wife if something goes wrong, right? <laughs> if I did something wrong, then I'm thinking, what did my wife do that maybe caused that? Then I can blame her, <laughs> right? But I don't do that, right? Just like me. I, I have bad thoughts about that. <clears throat> Anyway, if I did that, I'm not very responsible. Okay, do you know anybody like that who never accepts responsibility, always says it was somebody else's fault, says that they're always right? Hmm? He, he does? Okay. So I had an ex-girlfriend once in Ireland, and she told me that she was always right. So do you think I could have a relationship with that person? No. No, she really believed that she was always right. She told me, I'm always right. I can't be wrong because I'm always right. Okay? Then anyway, it was ex-girlfriend, right? It's hard to find, make a relationship with somebody who thinks they're always right. Okay? So, if we make a mistake, we have to accept it. It was our mistake. And apologize and compensate the victims who have been harmed by my mistake. So first I apologize, and secondly I try to make some compensation, or make up for what I did. Okay? So BP, first they tried to blame the rig owner, and then the cement contractor. So BP started off by saying, oh it wasn't our fault. Right? You can see some companies do that, if there's an air crash they might do that, or they'll say, no, 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 it wasn't me, it was the contractor. Do you understand the contractor? You make a contract with somebody. They are the con do you understand contract? Contractors. So they made a contract with the cement company. The cement company, you understand cement company? Making cement for the, this is made of cement, right? So they tried to blame them. They said, oh, the cement wasn't strong enough. If there was an explosion, then the cement should have been stronger to withstand the explosion. Or they tried to blame the owner of the rig because the oil companies, they don't own the rig, they just rent the rig. The rig is the thing where you put the drill, right? So they try to say, oh, but the rig wasn't done properly, okay? So this didn't look good because BP wasn't taking responsibility. They were trying to shift the responsibility to somebody else. Okay, also, they tried to make the residents give up their right to sue BP. So they went around along the coast, along the coast there's a lot of restaurants and fishermen and they offered them $5,000. They said, I'll give you $5,000 now if you sign this document. The document said, I will not sue BP. Okay? Or maybe it was $50,000, right? So they offered them a lot of money not to sue them. So uh, this was kind they were trying to do on by secret, right? That is not responsible behaviour. Okay, so the company has to try to behave in a responsible way. So of course again BP had to, they got caught trying to make the residents sign this document and they got some bad publicity about that. So we have to apologize here, don't blame the other people and then secondly we have to compensate the people we damaged. BP was trying not to compensate them, just give them loan amount of money instead of compensating them properly. So the next one is caring. So we can see some of these are a little bit similar to the ethics guide, some of these principles that we're looking at. Right? This is how to act in the crisis. You should act tr trustworthily and responsibly in a caring way. So they didn't install a safety device before the accident. So actually this kind of drilling 
If they did it in Norway or Brazil, by law, they needed to have this safety device. The safety device cost half a million dollars. Okay, and in other countries, the law is different, right? In the US, the law is different. Or in Mexico, the law is different. So they didn't, they said, well, we don't have to do this by law, so we're going to save money. We're going to save money, and we're not going to install the safety device, which was about half a million dollars. In the end, they lost billions of dollars. So this would have been a very, even financially, it would have been better to do that. If they had installed the safety device, there would have been no accident. So we said that before the accident, there was a survey. It showed that 46% of the workers were afraid of reprisal. Do you understand reprisal? Reprisal means like punishment or bad, some bad event. Bad thing happens to them. If they raise safety concern about the drilling. So BP doesn't want people who are complaining about the safety because they thought it, was, it would slow down. If somebody complains about the safety, then it takes time to investigate and then it slows everything down. So sometimes they just are quite mean, punish them or even fire them if they make some safety concern. So those, that amount of people was uh, concerned. So it shows that the company wasn't really caring about the employee's safety. Okay? They were concerned about the risk, but the company didn't want to hear it. And then uh, Mr. Hayward, who was uh, dealing with the problem, he went out on his yacht during the recovery effort. So while they were trying to solve the problem, he went out with his friends on the weekend on his yacht. Does that show that he cares about the problem or he doesn't care about the problem? What do you think? Is that a caring attitude? Nope. I'm very rich and I have a yacht. I'm going to go out with my friends on my yacht even though 11 workers died and uh, there was a big explosion. It's not really caring, right? So again, he, that was some bad publicity. But uh, he also made some phrase that uh, he said here, I'd like to get my life back, right? So he was saying that he was under a lot of pressure and getting a lot of uh, kind of criticism. So he said, I'd like to get my life back. So of course the families of the 11 dead people can't get their life back. So they were very angry that he made this phrase. He said, I can't, I, I'd like my life back, okay? So he, that's not a very caring attitude. He's not thinking about the families when he says something like that. Or also, another high up level person in BP said that uh, something about the little people. We have to look after the little people. He made the phrase little people. Do you understand little people? So basically he used the phrase little people to talk about the fishermen and the restaurant owners along the coast, right? So he's very uh, derogatory, right? It's like he's a high person, big person, and they're just little people, right? So he was saying, oh, we have to look after the little people. And then he said, oh, oh, did I say little people out loud in the media? <laughs> I meant to say that in the boardroom, not here in the press conference, right? So... Uh, that kind of talking in public and action in public is going to show whether the management has a caring or not caring attitude to the crisis. Okay? So we should have a caring attitude. The next one is the citizenship. So just thinking about the social good. So we're talking about citizenship. We want to, we're talking about social and uh, environment mainly, okay? So, protecting the environment, helping your community. So does BP do that? So we have this oil and gas trade body called API, and this lobbies against reform and modernization of safety regulations. So this is quite a powerful lobbying group in the US. So we can see how powerful the lobbying groups are. We have a U.S. Senator called Elizabeth Warren. She was thinking about running for president, but I don't think she's going to run against Elizabeth or against Hillary Clinton. 
Hillary Clinton just decided to run for president in the US at the weekend. Okay? But she said that the government in the US works well for Wall Street and companies which have lobby groups, right? But doesn't work well for ordinary people. So these days the lobby groups is important in Washington. There, if you go to Washington, there are a lot of offices owned by lobby groups. Do you understand the lobby group? This is a lobby group, trade body of oil and gas. So what their lobby group is going to do, their, base, their office is based in Washington. They pay some person a high salary to be in Washington all year round. That person is going to be trying to meet the government officials, the senators, right? For example, they'll invite them for lunch. Or they'll try to meet them after they come out of the Congress, right? To talk to them. That's lobbying, okay? And they, if the Congress is going to change the law, then those people will be there to tell them what, what they think about it, right? Normally when the government changes the law, it has some sort of system where ordinary citizens or companies can give their opinion to the government. But most people don't know about that system, or they don't have time for that. So these lobby groups give their opinion to the government, right? So the government is going to make a new law about new safety regulation for oil and gas companies. What is BP saying? Make the new law or don't make the new law? Don't make the, don't make the new law, right? So it's using this lobby group to lobby government not to make new laws in regulating the oil and gas industry. Do you understand that idea? Yes. So in that way, it's not being a very good citizen, right? It's not thinking about safety and so on. It's, it's lobbying more so to keep the profit. profit. <clears throat> so one suggestion is that the industry polices itself. Police yourself means check yourself. But in this case, because we look at their lobby group, their lobby group is always lobbying the government not to do new laws about that, then we think probably the oil and gas industry is not good at regulating itself. Okay? So, they should be a little bit more responsible with their lobbying. Then, uh, respect, we saw that uh, uh, Kant, was talking about respect, right? So we have this idea of respect here. We also saw in the ethics guide, respect others. We can see this very commonly. So, in this case, we could see, do you understand veteran? Yes. Veteran, what does that mean? Uh, to train or to very... Profession. Very old. Uh, old, right? Very old. very old. They've been doing it for a long time or war veteran, they came back from the war. So offshore means used to work offshore in the ocean. He said, if you got hurt, they just pushed you aside and put someone else in. So he thinks that the company didn't really respect the workers, right? You get, break your arm, you can't work anymore, okay, bye, you get the job, right? It's a kind of thing. So putting the profit before the people, for example, the drilling vessels were contracted on just day rates, so it means that uh, the people have to work very fast, right? It wasn't like a fee, just they're contracted on the day rate, so they have to go quickly. And they're always trying to speed up the process, always telling the workers faster, 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 faster. So they didn't treat uh, the workers in a very respectful way. Then finally we have fairness, so we also saw with the ethics guy, he had a principle of fairness. So BP made a 20 billion fund to help pay for the disaster. So far they've spent about 40 billion. It's not clear whether that is fair or not, because BP's revenue is 240 billion dollars a year. So this is, if they made this one, this is just uh, one twelfth to eight percent of the uh, yearly revenue okay. for uh, this fund for compensating the victims or cleaning up the environment and so on. So they increased, they spent more in the end, about 40 billion. It's a lot of money, but maybe we can't criticize BP too much on the fairness. It's not very clear. 
they, they did pay, in the end, they paid the money to the restaurant owners and the fishermen along the coast, right? Compensation. Because they were sued. So, uh, we can learn these, we should, BP should have used these kind of principles, okay? But they had this problem. They didn't, they didn't use these kind of principles, both before the accident and during the crisis. So because of that reason, uh, BP got some damage, right? The share price went down a lot, that kind of thing. So just we are going to talk about uh, what we already, um, we already talked about in the edX program, creating the correct, correct corporate culture. So we're just going to uh, review. According, we can find some new information on this uh, document. Uh, first of all, it is the first thing we do for s creating the, the correct ethical corporate culture is setting up the values. We said that's the first thing you do. We looked at examples, right? There's an example here. Uh, Scotia Bank. Scotia Bank is a bank. It has guidelines for business conduct document, and the CEO says. Each of us, us must always do what is right. This is always in the bank's best interests, even when doing the right thing seems to conflict with meeting sales or profit targets. We do not compromise our ethics for the sake of other goals. So this is about uh, making the value of the company. This company is very clear at the top. We don't compromise our ethics for sake of other goals, like profits or anything else, okay? So that's a value statement, very wide statement that we have at the top of our company. But even though BP had that kind of statement, it still uh, had some problems, right? So we can see the next step is implement the ethics program. So we need an ethics officer, we need a code of ethics, code of conduct, we need reporting channels. So in BP's case, they didn't have reporting channels, which was, how can I communicate the problem to the higher person, right? So we need to make sure we have also reporting uh, channels. So we see an example here of Siemens. Do you know Siemens? Do you know Siemens? Yes. So Siemens, yeah, Siemens in Korean. Okay. So in May 2012, Peter Solomson, he was a managing board member of Siemens, explained what they did when they discovered some of its employees were paying bribes to win contracts. So there was a famous case of Siemens in China. There are some big cities in China. They need a metro. Metro is a very big deal, right? So this Siemens guy paid a bribe to the Chinese local official to give Siemens the contract. Okay? Siemens is a German company. Germany is very low corruption. Maybe even the guy was from Germany. So we can see that uh, even this kind of company from a country which traditionally has low corruption can also have these ethical problems of paying bribes. So first of all, Siemens hired an outside investigator to find out how big was the problem. So they hired some private investigator, finding out secretly, watching their own staff, is this happening in other parts of the company? Okay? Then they offered amnesty. Do you understand amnesty? Amnesty? Amnesty means we're not going to punish you. You get no trouble. Okay? To employees who are willing to come forward and weed out corruption. So it's like if you watch the FBI, right? If you tell me about him selling drugs, then you can go free, right? So anybody who helped them to find a case of corruption will get the amnesty, okay? It's a little bit like the police. And then if you were found that you were involved in shady dealing, shady dealing means taking bribes or that kind of thing, you're fired and then prosecuted by the police, okay? So, uh, he wants to change the, 
corporate culture in, in Siemens, because when a company has that kind of problem, they want to change their culture later. Uh, we can see in the police in the US, they're talking about changing the culture of a little bit of racism, right? That uh, there was a shooting, a couple of shooting of the black people in the US, right? So the US police force need to change their culture a little bit. Siemens are going to change their culture. He says that he thinks people are, employees generally want to do the right thing. If given the chance, the employee will want to do the right thing. He says, our employees are thrilled not to be part of the problem and to be part of the solution. So he wants the employees to join him to help solve the problem together in the company, be part of the solution. So all of this is involved in the ethics program, right? We have our codes of conduct and so on. What happens if somebody, if somebody goes outside and does a bribe, right? Their colleagues can report on them. Okay? get some amnesty. They can be uh, prosecuted by, by the police. They can have a private investigator investigate them by the company. So we have this kind of system to deal with that. Then finally we need uh, ethical leadership. So do you think, we looked at the case of Enron. Do you think he was a good leader? No. Enron's Kenneth Lay and Jeffrey Skilling are obvious examples, right? where the leadership was wrong, right? We had our ethics, whatever, and then in the end, we also need the leadership from the top people, okay? So, uh, the, time, the time has 10, top 10 crooked CEOs. Do you understand crooked? Crooked means corrupt or bad, like that kind of way. So Time Magazine makes a list of the, those uh, kind of people. So here is, uh, ethical leadership failure on this table. So we have here a symptom, do you understand symptom? This is signs of ethical leadership failure. Symptom, if you're sick, you have symptom, okay? Like my wrist is swelling, then I have a broken wrist, right? What antidote do I need? I need some medicine and doctor to help me, okay? So the first one is the lack of vision. We don't see the ethical issue. We say that's not an ethical issue, okay? So what can we do? We, need, we try to look, maybe read more philosophy, read more about morals, right? Find out more about morals. Raise our awareness of uh, ethical things, can help us to be a better leader, okay? The next one is keeping quiet. We have, we know, just like riding the bike, we know the theory, but we're not good at putting into action. We know what the values are, but we stay quiet. So we have to make an effort to proactively communicate my values to other people. Put into documents what I think. Okay, when I'm sending documents around to the staff, I can put into the document my idea. Try to be more proactive. Next problem is incoherence. Do you understand incoherence? Incoherence means not clear. I'm not acting in a clear way. Here they give an example. My performance evaluation is only on profit. Okay? So if my performance evaluation is only about profit, how much sales did you make, how much profit did you make, then that's not really, even though I say I'm ethical and acting ethical, I'm not following through on that. I should make the performance evaluation have some other areas too. Okay? Uh, hypocrisy. Are you a hypocrite? Hmm? Do you understand hypocrisy? Hypocrite is that, for example, your English spelling is very bad, right? <laughs> then you see he's making a spelling mistake. You say, hey, look at your spelling mistake. <laughs> you're really bad at English, right? Then you're a hypocrite because you also are very bad at spelling, okay? So hypocrisy is saying one thing but doing another, no, another thing. Okay? Leaders can do that. They tell you, do this, but then they act differently. Okay? So very similar to double standards. Double standards is, I think, I have one standard for me and another standard for you. Okay? So be consistent in all realms of your life. <coughs> uh, the next one is complacency. Complacency is just 
I think everything is okay, so I don't have to do anything. Okay? So we need to recognize that it's a continual process or a journey. We have to always be improving ourselves. We can't just say, I'm an ethical person, I don't need to do anything. I'm fine. No problem. So we should, just like in the organization, we have to be humble, right? That we can make failures and we can always improve. People can always improve. So if we can do these things, avoid these things, right? And do these things, then we can be a better ethical leader. So just uh, here are the principles for dealing with a crisis. Be honest and transparent with information. Next, remain visible. Don't go away on your yacht with your friends having a party, right? Or anything like that. Accept the fault if you are at fault and apologize and compensate the victims, right? Take reasonable steps to fix the problem and stop it from happening again. So you have to do something. Demonstrate sensitivity to those harmed. Don't use phrases like little people or don't say, oh, I wish I could get my life back. Oh, I'm, I feel terrible. My life is terrible since the crisis, right? So ensure the natural environment and local community are protected. Respect the rights of all the stakeholders. And ensure timely and fair compensation. So this is what the guide we should follow if we are involved in a crisis. So uh, somebody mentioned the Korean air crisis with the peanuts. Do you know about the, that case? Well, do you know much details about that? Um, no? Yes. You do? Was the airline honest and transparent with the information? No. Did they remain visible? Or go run away and hiding for a few days? <coughs> hmm? no. Did they accept the fault and apologize? No. Did they take some reasonable steps to stop from happening again? No. no. Hmm? Did they demonstrate sensitivity to the harmed person? No. Did uh, this one is no. not as? Uh, did they respect the rights of all stakeholders? Did they ensure this fair compensation? No? no to everything? Can't be true. Huh? Anyway, Big P was no to a number of these two, right? But we could see the opposite Johnson and Johnson was the example of yes, 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 right? So we want our company to be yes on all of these points so that we can get better reputation, better long term reputation, okay? And especially with our customers. So we can see that uh, Toyota, Toyota usually are quite good at uh, apologizing, right? Mm -hmm. They recall their product immediately and they usually come in front, in the Japanese culture it's even different, they even bow down, right? Make a big deal about apologizing to the customers, right? So it depends on the culture too. If you're doing business in Japan you might want to bow down right to the people and say I'm so sorry okay so <clears throat> to sum up, to sum up uh, everything done by the company should be based on core ethical values right what are your core ethical values you can decide your core ethical values okay based on your moral philosophy if you like the ethics guy you can just take his core ethical values he has five easy to remember right yes or you can use the core ethical values from here they suggest Trustworthiness, responsibility, caring, citizenship, respect and fairness, okay? The guy said, be loving, caring. He said, be fair, fair. He said, respect others, respect, okay? Think about society. So, some way similar, right? These kind of values. So, we get the idea. Acceptance, excessive reliance on profit maximization has led to many crises. So many companies who are only thinking about, in this case with BP, the problem was speed, right? They want to do quickly to save money. Because the oil drill is being rented on the daily rate, so the less days they do, the more money they save, right? They don't have to pay the rent. 
So they were always thinking profit and speed more than the safety of the workers. That was the problem in BP. In Nike's case, we could also see this, that they weren't supervising the factories properly, right? So the kids of 14 are working making shoes, then it's cheaper, right? We only need to pay them one dollar. Yeah. We can pay the adult three dollars. Okay, so we make more profit. So if we deal with the crisis correctly, we have the opportunity to show that we, we can prove that we have these kind of ethical values. And then we can get some advantage from that. Like we saw in Johnson & Johnson or the other tuna company. So then let's discuss these questions with our partner. Thank you. 
Was it caring? What kind of mistakes did it make? Um, not caring. Why not? The employees. Give me one minute. Okay, take one minute. <laughs> Trust in BP. What was the problem? Uh, was not the management was failing in communication. Yes, there was a man right? communication failure. Uh -huh. The workers were not able to give their opinion to the management freely, right? Uh -huh. Okay. What other problem? Uh, procedures. What kind of procedures? The training and revision of employees. Okay. Anything else? So that's one reason, the trustworthiness. What other mistake did they make? Ah, trying to blame. Oh, oh yes. They were, trying, uh, they were not trying to shift blame for their mistakes. So they were trying to shift the blame. Shift ah, means move the blame to somebody else, right? Yes. Ah. So they tried to blame other people. So they weren't responsible, right? Mm -hmm. Then what else? What other mistake? Mm -hmm. uh, they didn't respect the workers. Okay, so for how didn't they respect the workers? Uh, when one person got hurt, they just want to throw aside and put somebody else. Okay. Alright, and then the last question. Uh, e -Hop J. Give three examples of leadership failure and the antidote. What should we do? Kind of leadership failure coming up. <laughs> we looked at this. Uh, we looked at this document. <coughs> Lack of vision, right? What's the antidote? What should they do to solve this problem? Make what? Goal. Goal. Okay. Next one. Another problem? Keeping quiet. What's this? What should they do? What's a key word here? Begins with P. Begins with P, ends with E, and has <coughs> or O A C T I V in the middle. <laughs> work. Proactive, right? They need to be proactive. Do you understand proactive? What does proactive mean? Are you proactive? Yes, sir. You have teamwork. 
It means you're doing something, right? Communicating to the other people about their values. Okay? And the last one. One more. In action, right? A little bit similar to proactive, right? They need to make sure that their values are implemented. Okay? <coughs> so then, uh, do you have any questions about the... Uh